Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Gita Mary and today I am going to share my opinions on some very popular zero waste swaps that I just personally don't feel lives up to the hype of their popularity or the extent to which they are often promoted in the zero waste movement. Obviously this is a super personal subjective opinion and if you think that this is completely wrong and you have a different experience that's obviously okay. I just think it's important to talk about what works and what doesn't work so we don't create a narrative where if this specific thing doesn't work for you in a sustainability movement then you can't really be a part of it. What I'm trying to say is that I think it's also extremely important to sort of criticize or be critical or admit that something doesn't work for you when it's something that happens in the movement and not only be critical towards things that are outside the movement. And I've done these videos before, there are some repetitions, but I saw a lot of new people coming to my channel. So I thought I wanted to sort of do this again with new perspectives and uh, hopefully something that's added that you also haven't seen before if you've been here for a long time. Anyway, let's get started. The first zero waste swap that I feel like doesn't live up to its hype or isn't worth the hype is the to-go lunch sets that usually just consists of bamboo cutlery wrapped in a piece of fabric. A piece of fabric that can often be used as a little dishcloth or as a little tote bag etc. But that combination is pretty common in like the zero waste swaps recommendations I have mentioned and shown things like this as well in the past. The thing is with this type of product is that there is a very convenient, very easily available alternative, which is simply just using the cutlery you already have in your kitchen and bringing that with you out into the world. Over the years, I have received so many of these cutlery sets, some of them even without wanting them. Uh, it's one of those things that I have just accumulated over time and I sometimes try to sort of give them to other people as presents. Now I use a lot of this bamboo cutlery in my kitchen. The thing is with these products is that bamboo is a really fickle material and it's not necessarily a sustainable material either. It has great potential to be sustainable but it isn't inherently. I've made videos both about the impact of bamboo fabric as well as the impact of bamboo like the the not fabric bamboo. A lot of them, not entirely always all of them, but a lot of them are simply made in factories in China and then relabeled and shipped out into some eco stores, which is really disappointing to see. And one of the reasons why I can tell is because the models that they have is the exact same things down to the last details, it's the same thing. And a lot of them are treated with coatings so that they're more smooth in your mouth or in your hands, but that makes them really unsuitable as cooking utensils, which is too bad. I still use them as cooking utensils. I wouldn't recommend it. I would recommend finding something completely else to do that with. But the overall set that you can often purchase with the little bamboo cutlery set and then the little napkin, etc., you can make that set yourself with a handkerchief and utensils from your kitchen drawer. Or if you don't want to use the utensils you have in your kitchen drawer, you can also just go to a secondhand shop and get, then get a set of cutlery and use that instead. That's gonna have a lower impact than buying brand new bamboo utensils. Okay, another one. This might be kind of a controversial burn, um, but I think to some extent that the wax wraps are a little bit overrated. I have used them many times. I've shown them many times. I still use them every day, many times. It's just, if I can avoid to use some of them, I will. There's a big quality spectrum and I have invested in some nice ones that work great and I've used them for years and I've also tried some that are really, really bad. <laughs> An overall thing with a lot of these wax wraps is that they require your warmth in, the ha in your hands to sort of stick and to stay in that shape. But it doesn't always work amazingly and if I have a jar that fits perfectly with the leftovers that I'm trying to preserve, I will use a solid jar, I will use a plate, I will use a bowl, etc. And if I can't use any of those things, I will use the wax wrap. But I think it says a lot that I will go through all of these other alternatives that are just as, if not even so, more easily available in my home, then I will prefer the wraps. They're not necessarily, in my everyday life, the first thing that I gravitate towards. 
Another thing, I have used this many times as well. Um, and it's just one of those things where if you sort of get accustomed to using this product, you're forgetting how much easier another thing is to use. And sometimes convenience is something that we have to battle. Sometimes convenience is something that, oh, I'm in sort of a habit of doing it the easiest way possible, but it doesn't really matter if I have to take like 20 seconds out of my day to do things in a more difficult way. If that means lowering your impact or lowering your waste in a meaningful way to you. But sometimes you're just inconveniencing yourself for nothing. Okay, one of the things that I used for a long time was a solid dish soap. And I use solid soaps for my hair. I have conditioner, shampoo, shaving bars, etc. All my soaps are solid. And I used a solid dish soap for a long time as well. And then I went back to using my bulk dish soap. And I was reminded of how much easier my life was when I used my liquid bulk soap. So I went back to using that. If you have the other option and it's also at just as low waste as the solid one, I don't see a problem with it. I don't see a problem with it at all. It's just, it doesn't really... It's a little bit less effective. I'm sure that everything gets just as clean, because why wouldn't it? Um, there's not a lot of difference between solid soaps and liquid soaps in terms of like how actually clean things get but it's more like the overall feel of it and I remember thinking that I was spending a lot of time doing my dishes where I would spend a lot less time doing it if I used the liquid one and since they were both pretty low impact I don't see a reason to inconvenience myself further I haven't had the greatest success experience with the solid dish soap. I still recommend it because it might just be me. It might work really well for other people. So it's not inherently a bad product. It's not inherently a more unsustainable version of something. It's really, really good. The idea is really, really good. It's just, it might not be completely for me. And I feel like that's okay. Yeah. Now I know for a fact I've talked about this one before because I started out in the zero waste movement with making everything from scratch. I thought it was completely essential to the zero waste movement that you made everything from scratch, even if a sustainable pre-made alternative was available to you. Making it from scratch would always be better, always more sustainable, always healthier. Can you see where I'm going with this? Anyway, today there's a lot of homemade alternatives to conventional everyday products that I despise. <laughs> I have talked in length about how much I hated the homemade DIY toothpaste. I still hate it. The burning passion. Now I use tooth taps so I don't need to make my own toothpaste, but I also felt like the entire mouthfeel of the toothpaste that you made yourself with, um, it was coconut oil and baking soda, it was horrible in your mouth. It felt awful. The sensation of like the oil warming up in your mouth was awful. It literally just gives me the goosebumps. And there are other low waste alternatives that you can use instead. So the options aren't just homemade or the store bought that we know the conventional packaged one. There are other options to choose from. So I don't need to use the zero waste home DIY toothpaste. Another product that I also really found didn't work for me at all was the homemade deodorant made very similarly to the toothpaste and it just never worked. I just didn't like the way it felt on my skin. I didn't feel like it was doing anything for me personally. Again, it might vary. It might work amazingly for you and that's completely cool. Like that is awesome. It just never really worked for me. I think one of the only products that I made myself that I continuously stick by seven years into the zero waste lifestyle is the homemade whipped body butter. I still use that basically every single day. Jens uses it as well and we both love it. That's not one of my favorite DIY products. It's one of my favorite low waste beauty products of all time. But the other ones, not so much. Okay, I don't think I've talked about this one either and I am excited to. But a thing I find to be incredibly overrated and not worth the hype at all is new reusable tissues. Not that there's anything wrong with using reusable tissues. Handkerchiefs. Not, nothing wrong with that whatsoever. But you can literally pick up any old fabric, cut it into squares and then you have handkerchiefs. It seems a little bit... A l what does it seem? It, seem? it seems impractical to go out and purchase handkerchiefs. 
expensively with a little dispenser. Honestly, I doubt very much that that is more sustainable because they're usually made from cotton and then we have the dispenser that's either metal or plastic. I cannot imagine that that has a lower carbon footprint than either cutting up an old sheet or simply using recycled paper even though you throw that away. I cannot even imagine that that has a lower impact because I don't think it actually does. Uh, I do have some new reusable handkerchiefs that I've used many times that I love that I'll continue to use for many many years hopefully. It's not something that I would buy today and I don't even think it's something I would promote today because it just it doesn't really live up to what it's promising. And uh, that's one of those things I haven't always known about, but that's why I wanted to include it in this video, talk about it today. Some reusable products are alternatives to things with very, 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 very low impacts, where you don't necessarily need to find an alternative for it. And I think it's something that comes from the trash jar mentality that nothing can go in the jar. But sometimes there are instances where a very low impact single use product is more sustainable, has a lower impact than buying a reusable alternative. Obviously that depends on how much you're using it, how long you're using it for, are you using 13 tissues every single day, then it might be more sustainable to wash them and have reusable ones. Obviously there are better ways of doing that than going out and buying new uncertified cotton handkerchiefs, better ways. But if you only need a tissue once in a while, it might actually just be more sustainable to use a piece of toilet paper or to use a piece of disposable paper tissue than going out and buying specific cotton handkerchiefs from new. So I don't think they're living up to the hype exactly. And lastly, this might just be me exposing myself a little bit, but I think that some of the metal st stainless steel lunchboxes don't live up to the hype. One of my first swaps ever was the Eco Lunchbox Triffin and I still use it every single day. There's nothing wrong with it. You cannot even tell that it's seven years old. But I have other lunchboxes that has become undone in the corners that makes them really difficult to close where they're just not necessarily holding up their quality very well. So I think there's a big quality spectrum and I would any day I would recommend Eco Lunchbox because they're doing amazing things and the products I have from Eco Lunchbox have lasted perfectly for years. But I cannot say that about all brands. They're not inherently living up to their hype, especially not if they end up breaking or end up being limitedly useful, then they cannot function as the alternatives to so many different types of disposables and thus they are not really offsetting their impact because stainless steel is pretty impactful it's a pretty impactful material so you need to use them for years and years and years in order for them to be sustainable and you can't really do that if they're broken <laughs> anyway in order to make sure that your stainless steel lunch boxes does not break i wouldn't throw it in the uh, I, would have, I was about to say microwave, but I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Don't throw them in the microwave. Also, don't throw them in the dishwasher and also use them limitedly in the oven. I know I've used the Eco Lunchbox in the oven for shorter periods of time and it's been fine, but I think I've done that with the ones that broke as well. Or like broke, I still use it. I still use it all the time. It's just really, really difficult to close <laughs> because like, yeah, the corners are sort of um, splitting which makes it difficult for the lid to fit. So I would be careful not to expose my stainless steel lunch boxes to a lot of extreme temperatures, like a lot of going back and forth between ovens and freezers and etc. I wouldn't necessarily do that. So in order for them to last as long as possible, perhaps that's the trick. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any personal experience with any of these products that are either similar or completely different to what I've said in this video, leave them down below and let me know. And if you know of any zero waste swaps that don't live up to the hype, and if you have any examples of zero waste swaps that just doesn't live up to the hype according to you, also leave them down below. I would love to see if we have different experiences or similar experiences. I'm curious, so let me know. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day and take really good care of yourselves. Until next time, bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye.